Boom. All right. Why sell Rico trial? Young thug. You already know. His robe is sitting out on the screen right here. Detective, officer, whatever you want to call him. He's the guy who's in the Taurus, the unmarked Taurus, going through the gate in the apartments when the alleged robbery is going down and DK is shooting at somebody and this guy pulls up with the two females in the Taurus and gets out banging his iron at DK. All right. This is him right here, right? And now they're accusing that Thug was in the car also, but he mysteriously just vamoosed and disappeared. Boom. They saying Thug was in the back seat somewhere with DK. All right. That's cool. So this him right here. He a wild guy, right? But look, that situation with Thug and DK is eerily similar to this. Officer. Yeah. Blams and blams driver while hanging halfway out of the car. Yes. Happened in 2017. S situation kind of weird, but someone actually, it was fatal. Right? Police involved shooting. It was fatal. Check it out. All right, boom. I'm going to read it. All right. So family members of a man that was laid down in a controversial officer-involved shooting outside an Atlanta police annex last month are calling for the officer's dismissal after his version of events was clearly contradicted by newly released surveillance video. The footage from the January 26th incident shows that Officer Yassim Abdullahad was fully inside the car driven by DeAndre Phillips when it disappears from the view of the annex parking lot on Donald Lee Hollowell Parkway. Abdullah Hud, an 11-year veteran of the force, told the Georgia Bureau of Investigation that he was hanging halfway out of the vehicle when he fired his gun, striking Phillips once in the head. So, I'm going over this, right? Now, y'all, some of y'all might be thinking, yo, what's this got to do with it, right? Well, the weird part about Officer Yassim Abdullah Hard, besides the obvious, is his partner was this guy. Yes, El Malik. So look, check this out. released surveillance video in a deadly officer involved shooting. An Atlanta police detective shot and killed DeAndre Phillips last month in front of the Atlanta Police Public Safety Annex building on Donald Lee Hollowell Parkway. The shooting caused public outcry for release of evidence in the case. Fox News Morris Diggs has followed the story since the very beginning. He joins us now live and Morris, how did the Phillips family respond to what was on that video? Well, this video is taken from a distance. It's a camera on the building. So what we'll be able to show you is limited, but take a close look. Now, an attorney for the family of DeAndre Dre Dre Phillips says the video does support evidence he's been able to gather that the shooting was unjustified and the encounter never should have happened. The Atlanta detectives say they were at the police annex parking lot about to go inside. They're in a red unmarked vehicle. They walked over to a vehicle DeAndre Phillips was in because they say they smelled marijuana. What? About 30 seconds will elapse. The next All action, right, according to off, police, whoa, whoa, shows. Whoa. All right, first off, they just edited the footage somehow. I don't know what just happened, but they edited it. But pay attention when them boys got out the car. Them boys walk wide, right? But they looked like they was intentionally pulling up to this dude. But what was a dude pulling up to the police annex for? Just a regular dude, y'all. And it's not on paperwork why he was there, y'all. So he just in the parking lot waiting. And two undercovers pull up and go directly over to him. And then he wound up getting blamed. That's what happened. Seriously. But check how they got out the car, though. Mind you, one of these dudes. Hold on. One of these dudes is him. Pay attention. 
Huh. About 30 seconds will elapse. The next action, according to police, shows right, why they one edit, of the detectives involved in what appears. Why they edit that? You seen him cut it? Appears to be pushing and shoving. At one point, one of the detectives is inside, at least partially. Right. This this Robinson L outside the car. This Robinson L. This this him right here. Outside, his partner is in the car. What makes the dude that's driving drive off? What made him come meet these police on the back end of a police annex, y'all? Somebody in the chat tell me what they do at a police annex. He's in the parking lot of the police annex, y'all. What makes you pull up here? And you smoking? It don't make sense, y'all. Make sense out of this. Seriously. Oh, peep game, though. Starts up and drives off. Investigator Yasim Abdullahad fires a shot. An attorney for the Phillips family says the police account of what happened that night is full of lies. What? We have zoomed in on the alleged door that the officer was hanging out of and being dragged from. It's completely shut. The other officer never even reaches for his weapon, never even drops his notepad and bag that he has. He stands there looking at the entire thing like, what is going on? Because it never should have happened. And attorney Christopher Stewart says the falsehoods started from the very beginning. Oh, yeah. I also spoke to the GBI and they've confirmed that there was no lit marijuana cigarette in the car. Whoa, he ended whoa, up killing somebody whoa, that we whoa. shouldn't have done the way that he did. So, yeah, I am expecting justice. From so we got to lie about the initial reason. So how can we relate that to the young thug case, y'all? We got to lie about the initial reason they was even there. That's similar to the thug case, right? And then co to correct it, they get to banging that iron. Then when it go wrong, they tell lies to blame the, the victim. So I want y'all to know this person that they shot right here, they, the initial things was they put out in the news that Holmes was a gang member. He was smoking grass. That's why they went over there and, and everything went willy nilly. Telling a whole bunch of lies to cover up there and but I want y'all to look deeper at this video. Why they was even meeting Holmes in that parking lot, though. They knew that was him right there. Y'all ain't see how they got out the car and walked straight over to Holmes? Bro, if you talking to somebody in the parking lot, you don't know, bro. You don't even got to walk up on them. You, you could talk from a distance. You don't know, actually walk up on a car. You familiar with these people, bro. I'm telling you, that wasn't no police approach. That ain't look like no police in the, at a police annex and we we walking down on suspects like in the parking lot because they smoking. Nah, bro, they don't even add up the way they walked over there. Pay attention. So what was that? Just like in the situation with Thug and them, it don't even make sense. Like it was a play gone wrong. And the cover up is get the banging that iron. We could make it look good on paper. I am expecting justice from I got Paul more state too. And I think everybody that's been out to support this family. We had a rally of maybe over a little over 200 people. Over 50% of the people that came out to support this family were white. Justice doesn't really see a color. That's irrelevant. Emotions are high surrounding this case with Chief Erica Shields saying that this detective, the one who fired the shot, is now being protected by Homeland Security. What? And Chief Shields says it's important to get this video what? out because in cases such as this, she wants as much transparency as possible. Live from downtown Atlanta, I'm Morse Diggs, Fox 5 News. Thank you, Morse. Gwinnett. All right. Oh. Oh, it gets spicier. Against an Atlanta police officer. I swear it gets spicier. Who shot and killed a man outside of the public safety annex. Tonight we've learned that same officer is already under investigation for police brutality. Oh. Middle 2's Nefertiti Jaquez is live in oh. Newtown, Atlanta, where the alleged assault happened. Nef. Juvita, police said that it happened right here behind me in the parking lot of this bar last fall. They say a family member of the man called APD three days after the alleged attack and filed a complaint, but APD says that they immediately started looking into it. Their only problem is, is that in order for them to do a fair investigation, they would need this man to come forward. These pictures are graphic. They show the right side of a man's face swollen, bloody, and bruised. Every day. Like to even have to think about it. 
While we were at his parents' home inquiring about what happened, we spoke to the alleged victim over the phone. Anthony Walter says he was brutally beaten by an Atlanta police officer while leaving a Midtown bar. In a report obtained by Channel 2, we've learned that Walters accuses Officer Yassine Abdullahad for attacking him. He is the same APD officer who's being investigated for the shooting death of a man at the Atlanta Police Annex building. In order for us to do a fair investigation, oh. we must have both sides of the story. And he's not cooperating in the investigation at this point. While APD said... Bro. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Y'all see the connections? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. He working at off-duty clubs too, huh? Oh, who see the connections? The police work at the off-duty clubs? Ho, 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 ho. Oh. Who, who on point? Y'all keeping up? He work at the clubs too, y'all. Ooh, y'all on the same page, tap the like button for me. Let me know what you what you saying. So, all right, I brought this to the table early. I'm going to do more research into this situation because they got paperwork and documents. They, they didn't charge these police. I want y'all to know. They didn't charge. This police got off. They covered it. They successfully got away with this. Yeah. Yeah. They got away with this. Yes, sir. They did not get charged. Well, hold up. Who see the other connection? What's up with these two boys, these boys' names, though? Abdullah Hud and his partner, Robeson L. That's weird. Them boys sure got some spicy last names. Sound a little bit. What is, ain't no way them boys practice the same religion, is it? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. So look, as you see right here, this guy that I'm talking about, Abdullah Hud and his partner, Officer L. Malik Roberson L., which is this guy that's in the Young Thug case. And just to let y'all know, Fonnie Willis was in charge of this, this police shooting in this situation. So, yeah. Yeah, what y'all think about that? That was something I found. And I thought it was interesting. Thought it was interesting. Straight up. Straight up. So look, they pull up. Bam. They in the four door. What that is? The charge? Nah. One of them. They back in. Right beside the victim though. Peep game. They pull beside the victim. <clears throat> mind you, mind you, it looked like the victim car got his foot on the brake. The brake light looked like it's bright red. I'm just assuming, though. Looked like he actually, in, you feel me, in there. Now, they claiming, all right, the, the, the report don't even make sense, y'all. Some of the report talking about Holmes was in the car asleep while he was in his annex. Don't even make sense, y'all. They claiming he was the driver, but at the end of the day, they highly he wasn't the driver. Like, I'm confused, but the whole, my whole point for bringing it up in connection to the YSL Young Thug Rico case is when we're talking about the flying car situation and we looking, trying to figure out what's going on and we're wondering why the dispatch and the, the, um, the radio calls don't match what the testimony is of each police officer and we got conflicting testimonies and, and, and um, descriptions of witnesses. It's... I think something fishy. All right, look. Both them boys get out the car walking slow. Look, peep game. Watch him look back at the white car. No, no, no. He looked back at the white car to make the white car was gone before he went over to this car. He knew he was going over there, y'all. Look at this, y'all. I'm telling you. Real rap. This dude right here. Whichever one of them that is knew he was ready to go to the car, but he walked wide to let this white car dip off. Peep him out. Peep him out, bro. He gets out. I know this type of play. This is the type of move I pull. If you're in the parking lot and I'm ready here to play, I'm going to let you drive off before I bop to the car I'm going to because I don't know who you is. Look. 
Look, watch him. Oh, no, it's him. Look, he walking wide like he not even going over there. But he clearly knew he was. Y'all seen that? Y'all seen that? The driver. Peep him. Peep the driver. He going to walk straight like he going here. But he know he ready to walk over here. Look, he looking over there already. He looking at the car already. He looking at this car. He looking at that car. But he walking straight like he not going to the car. Look, he watched this car leave. When that car leave, now he turned back. Why was that police officer walking like that, like he wanted that car to leave out before he went to go talk to these people? What's the point? If you smell marijuana, you'd have walked straight over there. Straight up. Peep that. All right, look. They both had the passenger side window talking. Police don't do that on no old suspect. So they cool with homes. Y'all know how they do on suspects. They going to give you some type of corner type of post up the way they, they, they walk down on you. You know, they never going to be facing with both their backs facing straight. You know, both of their faces facing straight to you. One of them going to face you and one of them going to get a side angle. True or false? When y'all seen them both talk to you at your window like it's both of your mans and y'all about to go in the club. Straight up. I ain't never seen Law pull up on a car like this. Look. Look, he back up. Put, put some paperwork on the car. They said whoever was in his car was meeting them for some paperwork, y'all. I swear to God. I swear. It's something like that. Don't quote me on what they said. They said whoever's in his car was here to meet up at the police annex, but he winds up getting shot. And they turned it into saying he was a gangster and tried to smoke him by threatening their life because the police was hanging out the car. That's why he banged him. Bro. It's the same type situation. Something fluked, and their result was they covered it up and blamed it on the guy. Now, my reason for bringing this up is, I just told you, this flying car situation over here. This dude right here is out here. Yeah, LaDana, remember I asked that. Like, bro, them boys down in Atlanta, and the secret, the, the other part is, it's, it's, it's groups of blacks that believe that technically it's blacks that make it bad for everybody, so they don't need to be it. Straight up. Allegedly, that's my concept. Salute to everybody that's watching this. If you're watching this on the playback, this little clip, little little situation I put together. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do some research on both of these police. If you know anything else about these police, because there's more information. Yeah, I just started. I just started. This was the surface of what I found, y'all. So if you look up these police, send me anything to Eban Films at Yahoo about this police, that situation right there, and the, any more corruption they covered up. Seriously, because I believe that you can look at the flying car situation in the YSL Rico and we're going to see some similarities. Real rap. Straight up.